everyone. There's just a few minutes of, uh, I guess it's kind of business. And, and you know, I used to be kind of shy in doing this, <laughs> asking people to invest in our work, but I'm totally over that. Because, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm old now, but actually, you know, it's, I, I believe in what I do. Doug believes in what he does. Um, and we know we are moving the bar. Um, so now's the time of the evening where we ask you to invest in us. And because that's typically the kind of questions we get after the shows. You know, we've identified some solutions. How can we be a part of it? So I'm kind of going to lay it out for you. And it's not all about money, but we'll get to that soon. <laughs> One of the things is, you know, really, uh, the provincial government needs to hear from you. It really does. You may wonder why, despite these incredible poll numbers, pollsters have commented that rarely, rarely, rarely do British Columbians ever agree on anything to this level. So you might wonder, why the hell is the province digging its heels in? Well, here's what's going on. There's a few ridings, particularly in the southeast of the province and the northeast of the province, where hunting is sacred, where seats between the Liberals and the NDP are heavily contested, and neither party dare do anything that sends a signal that they're going to be giving these urban environmentalists or First Nations, actually, uh, uh, something in the hunt. And so the argument from kind of the bad guys there, and that they're just a small, what I refer to as a fringe population of hunters, because most hunters, it's reflected in the data also at about the same 90% level, they're also opposed to trophy hunting. But that small fringe minority is using an argument that goes like this. If you let those environmentalists and or First Nations take away your grizzly bears, they're going to come after your elk, they're going to come after your moose, and deer, etc. And nothing motivates uh, both the hunters in these areas and the politicians to do everything they can to stop this grizzly bear hunt. Uh, campaign from success. So that's where we're at, kind of a stalemate that the Liberal government and the NDP opposition dare not do anything, at least province-wide. Doug's been very modest in underplaying his nations and other nations like his ability to sit down at the table and negotiate with the province. We're now in an era where the province wants an awful lot of coastal First Nations. And I won't say any more, I won't tip uh, Doug's hat, uh, but Doug is doing a lot of heavy lifting uh, on behalf of, you know, 90% of the province. And, and that's probably how things will change in those negotiations. But you can play a part, too, by engaging. One uh, really good uh, avenue for you to do this is through the bearsforever.ca website. Uh, check it out. It's a product of the Bear Working Group. Um, uh, check out the Bear Witness, the movie. If you haven't seen that movie, um, please do that like tonight or, or tomorrow to learn more about this. Uh, also, of course, check out Spirit Bear Research Foundation or spiritbearfoundation.org and, of course, rainpost.org. And on both these sites, the first and last site, you can find out how you can contact your MLAs, the Premier, etc. Um, because, you know, it's very easy for us to sort of shake our head here and go, why is the government doing this? And then we go home and we don't pick up the phone or pick up our keyboard to tell our government, our pro provincial government anyways, that, that as a voter that you're um, adamantly opposed. So I, I encourage you to, to do that. Yes, sorry. I think it's important to say that the way that people choose to communicate is actually really important. The provincial government has, if they for the people that work in the communications department and for the federal government, they have a, a sheet that they go by, which if you get a signature on a petition, like a handwritten signature, it's worth this many people who feel the same way. Online petitions where you sign via email, 
unfortunately, they help, especially when you can deliver them in large quantities, but that doesn't really catch uh, the politicians. If you send an old-fashioned letter, handwritten, with pen and ink, and you put a, no, you don't even use stamp, you send it off to them, that, according to the provincial sheet, is worth about 400 people who feel the same way, but who have not bothered to communicate. So that's, for the scientists here, statistically significant. So, <laughs> Very low P value. Thank you. <laughs> That's important. Um, we're also going to ask you to invest in, 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 Doug mentioned how expensive this work is. So Doug maybe said a couple of minutes about the remote cameras. Yeah, I mean, uh, if, if, you know, the, the remote cameras are extremely expensive. Like I said, we have well over 100 rivers. Uh, so everyone want to look at supporting. The purchase of a camera, which helps us collect all that data, uh, you know, would be huge. It help us, uh, a Spielberg Research Foundation or Rain Coast to be able to collect that data uh, and go and do something with it. So that would be very helpful. Um, I kind of did a back of the envelope calculation because we capture many of these animals genetically time and time again within a season and across seasons. And on average, these bears, if they're not killed early by, by humans, they can live 10, 15, 20, 25 years. Um, and so to track something like this, maybe not on the 25 year time horizon, but the next five or 10 years, that's about how much it costs to do that. Another thing you could do is potentially uh, for a donation of, of 3,000 would go towards supporting uh, a local person in the community. Uh, you know, we have students that we're hiring to really encourage them to get involved in some of the science work that we're doing and uh, that helps really keep that science in the community that we can continue these kind of projects uh, over the long term. Um, we've hired this lady, uh, this young lady uh, right out of school. She was uh, an intern for a bit and now she's a full-time staff member with uh, Spearberg Research Foundation. So. Um, and you know, maybe many of you, I'm, I'm just joking here, but are saving up for Black Friday and Best Buy and, and all this stuff. It's the holiday giving season. So we're basically giving you some other options to consider for, for your family member. Here's the biggest one, uh, of course, and that's, that's the help of both the nations and the coast buy out a whole bunch more of these guys up and down the coast. Our intention is to knock these things down like dominoes. And, uh, it's very expensive to do so. And so, um, Although only maybe a small fraction of you have the resources to, to go big to help us do this, um, sometimes some magic happens at, at uh, evenings like this. So um, we thank you for considering that um, too. We've already done uh, questions and answers. It's a tiny bit more work with our uh, raffles here. I'd like to thank everyone. Uh, uh, for coming, thanking the sponsors of both tonight and our uh, science. Um, tonight's volunteers, some of whom are coming down right now. And uh, I think we're going to go for it here. So grab your tickets out if you can, please. <laughs> I've been told this is the Rain Coast gift bag, goodie bag, and there's some wonderful